I've talked. You guys want to go later? I thought we were going to get an email. I kind of said the same thing. I haven't really been able to figure out how I can help you after you guys talk later. We'll figure it out there. Hopefully, I'll be able to get a little involved. Bye, man. All right. All right. You are already supposed to go. Okay. All right. All right. All right, so should know exactly what to do on this. Again, this is even though it's got a squared. To, well, no, that's algebra squared terms. Um, what does evaluate mean? It just means solve. So all we're doing is we're plugging in that value for the that for the everywhere you see an x, and then we're solving. 2x squared means 2 times x squared. So that becomes this. And then we say subtract. 4x means 4 times negative 3. And then we would say plus 3. Uh, it's a little tricky if you're trying to do it. And I don't, by hand is not the right word, but if you're, if your calculator doesn't, handle the order of operations for you correctly, which some of them don't, you've got to know like, okay, well, how do I, I break this down and, and do it? So um, this is pretty easy. This isn't that bad. Three squared or negative three squared becomes a positive. So we have two times nine. This is the part that becomes a little trickier for kids sometimes because they're like, well, do I subtract? The four, or even if I know I don't subtract the four, because that I wouldn't do that if I follow the order of operations. Do I multiply negative four times negative three, or do I just multiply four times negative three? Again, I think these calculators are pretty good with the order of operation stuff. I like to think of that as negative four times negative three. As long as you get the answer I'm about to come up with, I don't care. If your calculator did it for you, uh, and you will have to use my calculator, so don't do this stuff in your phone and think that that will, will be what you're going to use. You will not be using a phone on the calculator or on the quiz test. So you need to make sure you become comfortable with a calculator I have in this room. The blue ones are the ones that are always up. If you really don't like those or don't know how to use them, I have these, which you've probably used before. I think we got them in a couple years ago. Oh, I'll have to look at it. You can't just use any calculator because I want it to be the same one that you would use on like an ACT, SAT. There's no EOC anymore. You're done with all those. So I don't like those really limited, I think. So yeah, the um the EOC you had to like have like a scientific one that was pretty dumbed down, I think maybe. So there's no EOC store. Well, no, you'll have one. It's just not made up by the state. And you, and you can exempt it now because of that. So, again, if you have issues with lates and, like, absences and tardies, then you won't be able to exempt. So keep that in mind. For those of you that are like, oh, it's the last class of the day. I don't feel like going. Well, then you're probably not going to be able to exempt my exam. So if I think about that as negative 4 times negative 3, that gives me a positive 12. Oh, I've, yeah, that's fine. I should have just gone and do that, done that. Right. And then plus three. So it looks like we should have gotten 33. Is that what you guys got? All right, if you did not get that, we, I'm not always going to be able to, to do this, but today quickly. Anybody that didn't get that, just because I want to make sure you're using the calculator. Everybody's good? All right. All right, so again, evaluate, and there was a whole section on that. That's why I did that particular type of problem. In your book, look at 55 and 56. Uh, if you want to do, I do as much as you can. Like I said, it's up to you. Oh, I'm sorry, page 13 is where that, those are. But yeah, 12 and 13. So page 13, 55, and 56. 
If you do 55, you can just check your own answer in the back. So that's probably a better one to do than skipping the 56. And then if you want to, if you are done, you want to go ahead and try. We're not going to do anything with identifying terms. I'm hoping you can identify coefficients and terms. We've sort of finished absolute value already. So actually, I did that. We got the absolute value. Yeah. Uh, you got to. Yes. So yeah, so you would yeah. ask. We did do the absolute value. You just put it. Oh, we did. Wait, so yeah, we did absolute value. Absolute value. I covered it Again, you're supposed to know it, so we're not going to go very often. We're, we will rarely go backwards and review some until we get to like the main part of the course, but it's prerequisite. So we're just going to have to go back. There was one section. Let's know. Oh, actually, no, the section that I want to talk about is coming up. So 55 to 56. Yeah, I'll give you like two minutes. It didn't take you long to do, even though there's technically four problems because there's an A and a B value. You have calculators. Shouldn't take you long to plug numbers into calculators. <laughs> and I don't know the answer, so it'd be easier for you to ask each other we'll say what you're getting. I mean, the book in the back, remember, had it. Oh, I guess I could look that up. Okay. Oh, it looks like actually I didn't even notice this. If you look at the back of the book, the edges are slightly grayer than the rest of the book for the answers. So that's a quick way to find the answer. Look for the page a bit. A little bit grayer. The beginning of that. Yeah. Let's see here. 55. Looks like 55 or part A is 2. Part B is 6. Part A is 2. So for 55. Part A is 2. Part B is 6. Didn't get that? Try it again on your own. And if you're really not getting it, you can call me over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just giving you two different values. Yeah. Just, just so you get more. That's why. Again, that's why I say these calculators don't always handle the order of operations the same way. Although this one should. For which part is that? Oh, yeah. I tell you right now. This one, um, they're not going to square negative one and make it positive one that way. You got to put parentheses around it. So the parentheses, when you're squaring a negative number, if you don't put parentheses around the negative number, it just squares the number first. So I'll, I'll show you exactly what happened. If you put that into the calculator, type in negative and then the number one and then square that, it actually squares the one and then keeps the negative number. It doesn't square negative one. In your calculator to do that, you have to have the parentheses. You have a parentheses button on there. That's what you have to put in to square the number negative. Yeah, that's over here. 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 Yeah, and then you can try it again on your own. And if you're not getting it, then you'll just have to get with me like one off. I'm not going to do any more of this stuff in class. You got to get through it. Um, raise your hand if you're done also with 56. You did that one. What did you get for part A of 56? You got zero? No, you got zero. Um, I did see zero on somebody's page. So zero seems to be the consensus. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Zero. 
Uh, and then what'd you get for part B? Yeah. Technically, that's not right. But the B part. What's it? What's the denominator so in 56 if B is negative 2? I'm sorry, if X is negative 2. The denominator is 0. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not learning this seriously. All right, let's come. Glad, glad that one. I got they gave that. I'm not. Hey, actually, this could be an SAT type. So we can do this problem. That has an answer. Division. So do, what is do, oh, What is division? Can't use division or divided to explain it. Can't use the same word to explain the same word. Nope. Yeah. So what are we doing when we divide? Man, I'm going so far backwards. It's like second grade. We have a group of dots. I want to divide. So how many dots? I want to divide that by two. What am I doing? Nope. What's the answer? Figure the answer out. Four. So I'm if I'm dividing by two, I'm creating groups of two. How many groups do we have? That's how you get the answer. Right. So now, if I'm saying zero divided by four, how does that relate? Which which part of that is how many dots? The zero or the four? No. How many dots? The top part, right? Because I did eight divided by two. The top part is how many dots? Right? I have zero dots. So if I start with no dots and I divide it, what do I wind up with? No dot. I still have to do that no dots, right? So I can get zero. I can get zero here. Now, though. What's that? What's the top part? Four dots. How many dots, right? How can I start with four dots and not have any groups? You cannot. So what's the answer when you have four divided by zero? It's, it's undefined is the word. So it's not possible is, is the zero. definition of undefined. But yeah, you can't do that. If you have zero on the denominator, that's why a lot of times in math, when you see a variable at the bottom, or like whatever the problem is, they'll put a variable on the bottom, but then they'll say this, X cannot equal zero, because if it could equal zero, you wouldn't be able to do the problem. So a lot of times you'll see that problem, that's why. All right. Again, that, you may never see that again for the rest of your life, but still. Uh, all right, so now let's get, now we gotta go back to the problem. All right, next set. Um, we're skipping over. Oh, wait, where did we end? We ended on absolute value. Yeah, so I'm fine with us skipping all the way through to these. So I'm not worried about 51 through 54. We just did 55, 56. Oh, what is that? All right. Go ahead and try 57 through 60 if you haven't already. I'll probably do like one again. You can check your answers with the odds in the back. So 57 and 59, make sure you do. Oh, they're, they're actually just having you put that in simplest form. So you're not solving anything or combining anything. So that's a little trickier. I may not be super concerned about that. Oh, I got a great question I want to show you. It's not from the book. I was doing some like preparation stuff and I found this thing I wanted to show you. It's a really, it's pretty much pure SAT practice. And it's like when you don't know how to do the, the actual problem in the SAT, it's kind of like a way to get around, you know, kind of like remember I told you plug in numbers instead of trying to do it with the variables. It's one of those things. I'll show you how well that can work. Those of you who really want to get good SAT and 
So what do we need to do in those problems? Like what's the what's the concept we need to know to, to simplify those problems? Do you even know what we're doing? Like does anybody know what we're even supposed to be doing when it says simplify? It wants you to put them into one number. So you're not, there's nothing to solve. We can't solve for it. You're, you're kind of like trying to subtract it. You're just not going to be able to, to get a number answer. So you need a common denominator. That's what you need. So you need to figure out, what, well, what's the common denominator in number 57? Oh. It'd be 12, right? So then you need to figure out, well, how do I change 2x over 3 into something over 12? So well, that's what you're doing for that one. Then you say, well, how do I change X over four into like, what would it be over 12? And then you can combine the two top parts and, and it'll be over 12. That's all you're doing. If you look at the answer, sometimes you can figure out what they're trying to get to do. So don't, like, don't hesitate to look at the answer first. Once you see the answer, you're like, oh, okay, I see what they're going to do. Did you might do that one already? Whatever number. <laughs> well, what did you get? Five so somebody saying five x over twelve. Or did you look it up, or you just? So five x over twelve was the answer. They looked that up to confirm they got it. So that's what. What was the answer for number fifty nine? You guys, look at that one. Answer. X over four. So it sounds like maybe they had to simplify that. So was it fifty seven and fifty nine? Is that what I told you? Oop. I didn't check. X over four, is that what you said? There. Yeah, like in this book, don't ever hesitate, especially since you're kind of supposed to know this stuff and odds are maybe, hopefully, if you kind of look at the answer, you'd be like, oh, I, I know kind of now what I need to do. Like, don't, that's the thing. Like, are you talking about, is it possible, do I know how to do it or will I do it for you? I can't, yeah. And you could write it on the board. I don't know. Can you show us how to do it? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, so we need, do you understand the common denominator, all that concept? Okay, what's, tell me the problem. I forgot already. 2x over 3 minus 3. That's somebody out. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. No, it's not. Wow. All you guys are leaving home with that. Who thinks they're going home? Or leaving? I mean, nobody even knows they're going home. But I'm not going to give you their pass. So if you raise your hand, you're not going to get their pass. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. That's fine. I'm sorry. She's not going along. Why not seeing? Oh, wait. Was she my last? Last class? Oh, she's in my last class. Oh, huh, thank you. I missed her by a long shot. Uh, oh, all right. So now, so we need a common denominator of 12. Now, this is the way I do it. So there's other ways to do it. I kind of just figured out, kind of. I know I need to multiply that by what in order to get 12? I need to multiply by four, right? So I would say, all right, well, if I need to multiply that by four, I can multiply anything I want by the number one, right? One times two X over three is still two X over three. I don't change the value of it. So I'm gonna multiply by one, only I'm gonna make the one a version that has four in it, because that's going to be my common denominator. Well, if I then multiply the four times the two X, I don't know why I wrote two again. So four times, so four times three is the 12 I need. Four times two X is the eight X. That gives me the first question. Same concept here. What do I need to multiply times four to get 12? So I'm going to multiply this term by a version of one, only it's a version of one that'll give me the 12, which means this has to be three, which means that has to be three X. 
again. No, a lot of your loss. But... Yeah, a lot of work to do to stay caught up. So now I'm just combining two fractions that already have the same denominator. 5x divided by 3. That one's, I would say, relative to like the stuff you should know. That one's a little trickier. I mean, it's below algebra two, though, and you've all been through algebra two. Yeah, I can't describe it. Uh, I'm basically doing all the problems, even though I said I wasn't going to. Um, I said I wasn't going to do the examples, I guess. Uh, where's my work? Like that's that's like way easier than that. Oh my goodness. No, seriously. I get all right. I don't know. Let's let's do this because this actually leads. I don't mind spending a little more time on this. This actually leads into your next lesson, which is exponents. So that it That's what I said. I don't mind spending a little time on this. Uh what's this? I, I cancel them out, right? Right? Cancel them. Yeah, she, she jumped the gun. What's this? Not six. Right concept, wrong answer. One six, right? I can cancel terms out really, I'm simplifying. That's what I'm doing. I'm dividing that by three and that by three. So simplify. Sort of the opposite of the greatest common factor sort of kind of thing or similar. Um, let's still do it with numbers first. Does everybody agree that if I do this, I'm multiplying, right? Multiplying. Does everybody agree that property of multiplication says I'm really just doing this? Like, that's how you multiply a fraction. You just go straight across. You don't remember that. When you have a, you don't need a common. It's actually the easiest thing you can do with that. You're multiplying. Oh, my goodness. I can't really say. You're doing this part. See, this is, this is what happens when teachers teach you processes instead of understanding. Sometimes we can't help it. I mean, you're doing that. You're trying to solve or figure out if that is a, a proportion. Is that proportion or that fraction or that ratio or whatever you want to call it, is that equivalent to that? If you cross multiply and you get the same number, then it's the same proportion. They're, if you say they're the same proportion or they're in proportion, either way, it'd be the same fraction. You get the same decimal if you divide it out. So no, we're multiplying here. When we multiply, I'll just tell you then that's what you're doing. You're just multiplying straight across and you could say equals whatever you get for those two numbers. All right. So now taking that one more step. Again, spending a little time on it because we're going to see it again in exponents. Well, is is there any difference between this and this? Can I change the order of the 14 and the 3? Does that change it? Like, is 2 times 3 the same thing as 3 times 2? Is 2 times 7 the same thing as 7 times 2? I can change the order, right? Multiplication doesn't matter. So this is, that's fine, right? So now coming all the way back, kind of from what we did here to here, well, if I can take these and make it this, I can actually take this and make it this. Right. I just I mean, I just did it here. Just I'm going in a different direction instead of going from here to here. I'm going from here to here. So. I knew that. I mean, there's a there's an in like shortcut version that you're still lost. Over time. Now it's pretty easy for me to figure out. Well, wait a minute. That's two. Fourteen divided by seven is two. That's one third. So I'm really just saying two times one third, which is two thirds. 
if you're lost, don't worry. I always try to give you the understanding so that you understand and you'll truly remember it. Now I'll give you what you need to remember, at least through the first quiz. Hopefully it sticks with you. It's not that difficult. I oh, instead of going through all of that, I just did you to show you that it works. I could have just done this. If you have any numbers on the the top and the bottom that you can like simplify, so seven and fourteen are multiples of each other. First, yeah, multiples. I can just cancel immediately. I can divide seven by seven. I can divide 14 by seven. And I can simplify right there. Actually, let's write the one. I can divide three by three. I can divide nine by three. Right there. So now I'm already down to the answer of two thirds. I didn't even really do any math. I simplified sort of, but I didn't really multiply anything out. And again, this was I, that's what I got over here. Two thirds. So now try to do that problem that you all have, or not all. But there's some numbers that you can do just like I just did with the three and the nine and the seven and the fourteen. There's some numbers that will just go or simplify. They go to a one. They never go away. There's always a one left. But one times any number is just that same number. So. Did you get that one all right before? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I think she's doing it. Make sure I don't sort of One fourth down, right? Well, there's an X in there. Oh, yeah, there's an X and not one fourth. Right, so it's X over four, isn't it? Yeah. But I think somebody said that answer, right? Yeah. And we say that was, yeah, yeah, one fourth is not X over four, though. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mention that, yeah. Yeah, X over four is the answer, not one fourth. Like, what you think, do you understand why it's still working? Exactly. Oh, you're well, you're trying to get a common denominator or something. You can sure if you're multiplying, it's really like you're saying three over six. Well, no, I changed it. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Y
So look at 61, because these are not just math questions. These are some concept stuff. I don't think it's super difficult concept to think about it, but uh, it says if every non-negative number positive, is that true or false? Every non-negative number is positive. Why is it false? Zero. Because the one, there's only one exception, but if we can find one exception, then it's false. That's actually a specific type of reasoning. I don't know if they, yeah, they didn't really go into it. Like there's deductive and inductive and counter, like you did this in geometry. There was a counter, a T shirt, I don't remember. But like if you could come up with one situation where it wasn't true, then it's not true. Um, all right. So, yeah, so that is false. 62. Is it true, again, that if A is less than zero and B is less than zero, A, B is greater than zero? Is that true or false? Again, you can come up with one time when it's not true, then it's not true. But if you can't, then you have to say it's true. Is that true or false? So, I mean, you're false, false, false. Any other falses? Any other truths? Anybody think that's true? We got a lot of people that have no clue. <laughs> but we got true. So here's the deal. If you you don't have to tell me anything you think is true. Okay. Who said false? When is it false? Give me an example. Because that's the only way to say it's not true. You can't just because a lot of you think just, oh, well, nothing's ever like there's always some situation. Well, not always. Some things are just not true, or some things are just true. <laughs> You got to be able to give me an example of when that doesn't work in order to disprove it. You're disproving it. I said, God, I got it. It's example and counter. I know it's. I think it's counter example. That's actually what it is. I'm thinking asking for bathroom or you're. Yeah, but I yeah she was our. She had our. Do you want to be next to? Please. Oh, uh, yeah. So go. Can I go up and stand? Yeah. That's weird. Um, what did you say to the answer? The problem we're doing is that that one true or false? I'm going to say it's true. You think it's true? You think it's true? All right, I will let you know when you get back. Yes. So true, depending on whether or not you got to get this right. Are you wanted in the bathroom also? No. Okay, what do you think? I think it's true. You think it's why well, you got to give me a reason then? Why is it false? Give me an example of when it's false. But it, but here's the key. Now we're getting to the key. It doesn't say equal to or less than zero that A could be equal to or less than. It doesn't say B could be equal to. It says it's got to be less than zero. If you're less than zero, what's the sign of the number? Always, no exceptions. It's got to be a negative number, right? I don't care what the number part is. It has to be negative. You were. So if A is less than zero, A is negative. If B has to be less than, again, the key is not equal to, has to be less than, it's negative. What happens when you multiply any negative number? So we're all positive numbers greater than zero. And that's true. If you multiply A and B together, they have to be greater than zero. They're both negative individually. When you multiply them, they will be positive, which means they will be greater than zero. So that's a pretty good little potential. Certainly that type of question you'll see on the SAT, ACT stuff. Uh, you better be able to do 63. So if you haven't done it, do 63. You better all catch that error immediately. Although a lot of you probably made it as you were learning. Hopefully by now. Once you do that one, you can start doing that one. That's definitely that's easy. I know, right? I told Walter. It just got real.
All right, so yeah, once you've done that one, which shouldn't take you long, figuring out that error, do that one up on the board. I love that one, by the way. Ten hits. There was another one I did the other day that I said I loved. If you weren't here, you better go back and watch that video. So this is now the second problem I said that I love. So I imagine you're going to see something like this one, as well as something like the other one. That's a pain. Oh, yeah. I'm not a You I mean you guys are responsible for the work. Wait. Oh yeah, yes. I was like, where is Chase? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one will take you a minute, probably. Even if you know how to do it, it takes a little bit. And actually, don't take that. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Hmm? It's not in your book, by the way. This is just. I don't know when you were starting. Right. It's actually the same thing we already did earlier. It just has some more variables. So remember when we did the one that was something over four and something over, maybe it was something over three and something over, but we weren't multiplying. We were, I think they were subtracting them. Yeah. Same problem. Just you got so variables in the numerator and the denominator, not just the number. That makes it more confusing. Yeah, actually, and it's actually even easier than that other one, to say the truth, when I show you. You know how to do it? I want you to tell me if you're done with this one because I want to see you doing this one. Are you? Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I'm like, how in the world did you get that? I forgot this one. Yeah. What? You're like, literally, we're staring at each other and you're still saying guilt. He's not. I didn't want to kill him. Oh, probably not. No, can we look at both? Oh, okay. No, I'm just asking the first to start getting out. Absolutely not. You're wrong. Huh? No, what did it say? Wow. I don't know. I can't sleep much. That's strange. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're wrong. Wow. Look at it again. Oh, I'm pretty sure you're wrong. How? What else would be there? You can't just combine all the same way it is. You got to come up with a common denominator. You can't just combine across. It's just like the other one did when you had three and four, you can't just add across. Say four plus three is 12. Well, how does it work? Like you tell you you're wrong. It didn't work. It did. I mean, yeah, you can do it. You'll get the wrong answer, but you can do it. I hope you all have a calculator because you're going to need one on this one. I'm going to show you how to do it the correct way, and then I'm going to show you how, when you don't know how to do the math on an ACT, I'm going to show you how to cheat. No, that's what Marcy said. Oh, sorry. That's what she said? I did it. I know what it is. Come back. Come back. Mm. I want to see you work it out, for really. I want to see you work it out. You just, I don't know. Wait, let me show up. I don't know. No, I mean, like, you don't have to divide it, but, like, you take do it. I want to see you do it. I don't know how to do it on paper. How do you know if you don't know how to do it? How can you be so confident that you got it right? Because it's from here. No. Going? No, you bad. I made three trips back there. I'm not making four. I'm about to do it in a second. And then I'm, so the real the real point of this is to show you how when you don't know how to do something, there's a way around that. I mean, if you have a calculator, way around. You get that one? Yeah. Think? I don't. I really don't expect. Well, I shouldn't say no, but I would give you guys one or two before. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was over there. I I am. You had all your trips. I told you. No, I I could have You're both. No. You your trips are combined with her trips. She used three, and then when I came to you, that was four. Scream! Do it! Do it! Bet. Bet. Yeah, exactly. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do it anyway. I really, again, I wouldn't have been shocked if somebody got it, but I didn't necessarily expect it. 
But I do need everybody. Brady. Oh, actually, I don't even need this. I just start going like really quietly, not loud. It works immediately. If I do it loud, nobody can do it. All right, so here's a fantastic example of what you might see on an SAT or ACT and, and be like, you have no idea how to do this, but then a way where you can do it and, and get the right answer every time. With if you have a calculator. Well, you can still do it by hand, even if you didn't have a calculator, but it takes a while. So first of all, I'm going to zoom in and do it the correct way. All right, so when we are adding fractions, what do we have to have? You have to have a co Oh, did you get this? Wait, uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah, you can. Well, I'm fine with you writing them, uh, but you do have to have it when you go. So you have to have a common denominator. You can't just add straight across. Figure it out. Oh, well, that's what a pretty year looks like. We're doing, yeah, we're now, I'm showing you the actual way to do it versus the way to just kind of figure it out on a test. Like 16. So this needs to be a common denominator. Now, they actually made this one easier than it could have been. And, and the other way I'm going to show you will work. I don't care how hard it is. It, and it doesn't even get any more difficult the other way. What happens to be the case between this and this? Right. Yeah, if we multiply x by 2, we get 2x. If we multiply 2 by 2, we get 4. So it happens to be, in this case, we really just have to multiply this by two, which means though we can't just do that. We have to multiply by a version of one. Oh, sorry, by a version of one. You can multiply anything you want by one. Doesn't change it. So we're, just like we did before, remember when we multiplied by three over three and and four over four. So now we get x over two x plus four. That part doesn't change. Two times x is two x over two times that. We already kind of did it. Now we have a common denominator. Now that we have a common denominator, that just comes over here. That we have to add together. That's right. So you guess like three things and you're all here. Dude, bro. Sorry. I see that. All right. So now here's the deal. I'm going to show you a way that will work not only on this one, but if you if you have a calculator for that particular problem, and again, you could do it by hand. Normally, the numbers aren't that bad. This will work wonders when you're dealing with variables and you don't know how to like simplify or here's another really, I think, I take it, but I took a math test to get my certification when I take it five years ago, I guess, and they had all kind of problems on there like I'm about to kind of mention. They would say, here's your original problem, which one, and it have a bunch of variables in it, not just numbers, so you couldn't just solve it out. It would say, which one of these answers is the same, it's just a different version of that, like a simplified version or something like that. They love those problems, frankly, because since it doesn't deal with numbers, they're thinking that you can't do it on a calculator, like you've got to be able to figure it out. I'm here to tell you they're wrong. You can do it on a calculator. Here's how you do it. You can, and you have to still have a little bit of understanding of math and how it works. So that's what we're doing right now. If I want to know which one of these this simplifies down to, right? It means they're the same thing ultimately, right? It means they're the exact same. It's an expression. It's not an equation. They're just in different formats. So here's the next thing you have to understand. Well, if they're the same expression, they're, they're technically equal to each other. So they would give you the same number value if you plugged a number into this, and then you plug the same number into this, you better get the same answer because they're the same. If this is a version of that, when you pick a number and plug it in for X, you better get the same answer. 
No. Now, let me go. Let me finish. I do want you to see this because this really can help you a lot. And actually, oh, you weren't up in it. Uh, I want you to wait too. So, um, so get your calculator out because you're going to do it, not me. I don't care what number you pick. You can pick any number you want. If you're using a calculator, it really, frankly, doesn't matter that much. But just pick a number and plug it in for all, because if X is a number, it's the same number everywhere. And then you can solve out and get an actual number. So go ahead, do that in your calculator. You're picking a number for X. Any number, you can make any, as long as you make every X that same number. I'm going to pick two. Actually, no, I'm going to pick three. I'll pick a higher number. So I write three up there because that's my X there. I'm making X. So we're kind of like doing evaluate if X equaled three is basically what we're doing. And you can use one for X, you can use two. The key is, well, you'll see in a minute. Just do that part first. So two times three plus four. And then I got to do this second side. Uh, what I pick? Oh, three. So six ten three tenths plus three fifths, which is actually pretty easy to combine. Six nine tenths. Would you use three also or use the different number? Anybody else use three? The same number I use? I do math. Nobody else use three? Use not use it. Uh, let me just make sure three and three, that part's easy. Three times two is six plus, did you get that? Three over 10? Are you doing it again? Check. Right. So, I just so three over five, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm gonna show you in a second how to use the fraction button too. We're gonna also do that. Actually, let's do that right now. In your calculator, um, look at where I don't have one. All right, so in your calculator, here's how you do fractions. I'm going to, again, this is a pretty easy one to combine because I'm basically just doubling the five and then I double the, the three. But let's say it was tougher and you didn't really want to deal with all that. I'm going to hit the number three. Or number, now, you can do this with your own problem if you want, or you can check mine. So the number three, some of you already know how to do this. Then there's an ABC button kind of upper left. That's how you put in fractions. I hit the ABC button and now I hit 10. And you'll see it gives me something that looks like this. That is three tenths so it's being shown on the calculator. Yeah, put three tenths in No, you hit three ABC 10. Yeah, you were right. It's nine times. And then I know I'll try. So <laughs> uh, then I do it. Now I hit plus. I hit plus yet? Man, I can't. See. So then I mean, it makes fractions so easy. Oh yeah, I haven't hit plus yet on my calculator. So then I hit plus. So hit plus. Now you do the same thing. Hit the number three. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Hit the number three, and then that ABC button. And then five, and it should show it to you like this. So now your calculator is telling you it's about to add three tenths plus three fifths. And then hit equals, and it'll give it to you in that format. Actually, it shows it to you like this, though. It doesn't use that symbol, it actually uses that symbol to show your answer. Your problems with fractions should be solved. Again, I don't know what you get on the FAT ACT, they might be in the computer. Who's taking it? Is, that, is it paper normally or is it always paper? Then they got to give you a calculator and every calculator has that ABC button. Uh, so again, if they switch it online and it doesn't have that, then you're back to needing to know how to change the denominator and combine them. Are you taking time? And then play? Yeah, what did you do? You put all kinds of stuff. Or are you just messing with us? 
Did you use a different number? Is that oh, so uh, what they're saying is you have a, a mixed fraction one and one point two. So you, how would you actually? Mean? A B C again. Oh, you already got it. So do that all again. Could you do me a favor and show her what's your name? Ask Emmanuel, and he'll tell you what to do to show that in a different fraction. All right, so here's the deal. We're not done. So we got, when we plug, well, when I plug in, I don't know what you plug in. When I plugged in and evaluated that, or X is three. If X equals three, I got nine tenths, point nine. So when I plug it in, when I plug three in down here, one of these better give me point nine. Is it technically it's the same expression? It's just in a different version. So I'm just going to plug in three. Three plus one, and these are easier to do it with the answers. Three plus one is four. Six, so that's four tenths. That ain't right. That's broke. Three times, this is clear, I can tell you clearly, that's not it. Because three times that's six, that's one tenth. So that's not it. Three times two is six. Three times that is not, it's like five, six over 15. That's not it. Three times three is nine. Look at that. So you don't have to always know how to do the variables and change the format and get it into an answer with variables. You can plug in numbers. Just, you know, make sure wherever you plug in a number for a variable, you use that same number everywhere you see that variable. And that will work on so many of the really difficult problems on SATs and ACTs. And I, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent positive of this. And it, it, it might not, it, it was the case for the math certification test. I took these problems might be weighted more in the SAT and ACT. It's not always about just how many you get out of how many problems you had. Sometimes some problems I think might be weighted as more, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah. You have safety. No. I mean, it's for get, like getting into colleges and you know, if you have a specific college or if you're trying to get scholarship money or something, well, they look at that kind of stuff okay. sometimes. Maybe for athletes, but I guarantee you for students, if you're not going on sports, because you may go to a school that's like a private school and they have nothing to follow, their, their grades could be dramatically different than another school that has a different expectation. So there's Comparing grades is tough across. Even with it, I think I did this the other day. I might be a way easier geometry teacher than Mr. Fisher, or he might be way easier than me. So a student in my class might get a C, but they would have gotten an A in his class, or vice versa. So grades are, and again, this is well, some of this is just my logical thinking of it. Grades are tough to compare when you're looking at a bunch of people. So what I would say, they look for student involvement and then test scores, but I think you more heavily way to be. Uh, there's a little bit of a line. I think we got one here. Okay. And then were you after? Okay. Um, I had two left. All right. So it'll be one, two, three. Did you ask me already or you're asking now? I just talked to uh, well, we'll, if there's not tons and tons of times, we'll figure it out. Uh, there'll be plenty of time, I think. I'm sure everybody will go quickly. All right, so I wanted to show you that really quickly, since, again, if a lot of you are trying to get into specific schools because it's competitive, or just like Sid, the better your scores are, the more chance you might have to get some scholarship money from some school. The calculator on your test? Yeah, yeah, these, these, not necessarily your own or your phone. What if so I'm like, if it's same couch, but one girl had like a 
calculator with a display this wide and probably does equations and everything. I'm not letting her do that. One. Not in here. It's a bit different class. Uh, let's see. So let's go back to the book problems. Oh, what was the error on 63? We never really did that. It was not an even. You guys better all than that. What did they do wrong in 63? There's two equal signs. Don't make me show this, people. Um, what is that called that they're doing? Distribution. Yeah, that's a distributive property. What did they not do that they should have done? They go for it. It is five. five. <laughs> they did not multiply that five times the three. You have to multiply the number on the outside of the parentheses times both of the terms on the inside. Oh boy, I kind of like 55 and or 65 and 66, but we're not going to worry about it. 61, 60. If you are in 11th grade, there's a good chance you're going to be doing that kind of stuff next year, though. Or if you go into maybe college, some kind of college math next year, maybe they get into that. Calculus is definitely will. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to do greatest common factor. Just plugging stuff into the computer. I'm so it's in the world. Yeah. Uh, evaluate this. Maybe just want to plug into a calculator, I guess. Right? Maybe, maybe you're supposed to be doing this without a calculator. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't know what prime factorization is, but I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. Break down 75 through 78 and the lowest possible numbers you can that can be multiplied to get those numbers. I'm going to give you an example if you have no idea what it is. So here's an, um, yeah, I can do this. Oh, I got, shoot, I didn't write that. Whoa, 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 da, 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 da. Oh, actually, I need to be taking phones, too. Do you leave your phone in here? But I need to write, I need to write your phone. Or you need to write, somebody's got to write numbers. Again, I don't, I mean, they have been checking. I, every time I'm out there and I see Mr. Jackson, he checking people, so. He makes sure that you're going to the bathroom, but next to the way you walk out yeah there. like he it's not just a matter of how long you're out there he's not going to let you walk all the way down to the other side of the school to go to the bathroom when you walk to the right five but now i can't see that <laughs> uh all right so it's a really good pin by the way nobody steal my pin that's a good pin all right so we're looking at whatever number i just said to look at yeah I, well, I'm not doing that one. I'm doing a different one. This is what I want to see. I think this is what they mean by prime factorization. What are the smallest numbers that you can multiply together to get to 24? First of all, just give me two numbers. Two times what, though? All right. Is I was going to say, is 12 the small? Like, can I break that down more into two mul numbers multiplied together? Yeah, what are they? Six and two will work, right? So I'll make the two over here. So two times two, but wait a minute. Are there two numbers multiplied together that give me six? So this is what I am considering prime factorization. That. So that's what I want you to do in those problems. Break it down into the smallest numbers. Basically, they're prime numbers. That's why it's called prime factorization. So let's be an exception of four. Then you, then what's four, what can four be broken down into? Two times two, right? What can six be broken down into? Two times three. So it's you still always get the same answer. You can go a lot of different ways and, and get to the same answer. And so this would be your final answer you would write for those problems. Yeah. And that actually is kind of a lead in into the exponents that we do next lesson, also, which Kyle really wanted to start at. And we probably lost. I'll at least do that. That. Oh. So, 
Oh, wait, yeah, 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 that's exactly what you yeah. Uh, yeah, you just brought, I see, you brought this two down and you break that down into two. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we just did here. Yeah, no, 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 I see. I, I didn't understand when you, when you were saying it, but then why I looked at it. Uh, I'll give you a couple minutes and then we're going to move on. I don't think that's super difficult. We're actually going to use that. I'm going to skip over evaluating those expressions at the bottom, and we're going to move straight into exponents, which is the next chapter, the next three records of chapter. And, it, and it, this actually leads right into that, so it's a good point. I'll give you like two more minutes. You don't, get, I mean, you have the odd answers in the back, so you can check those. And, and if you're not getting those answers, you can get with me um, when you have a, a time either today or next class. It wouldn't be, oh, remember Monday, you need to bring your laptops. If you don't have one, you'll be doing paper. If we can't get, oh, shoot, I never did try to get a lab. I'll try to do that right now. Well, who was after? Me. What was that about? That was kind of odd the way you walk by and put that. A A L I. Uh, let me see if there's a ah uh, this I sh I waited possibly too long. Oh, actually, I don't even know if we can. That's why I didn't do it. I haven't gotten the spreadsheet to reserve one yet. Um, let me email Miss Simpson and see if she knows. Um, ah. Oh, I didn't see it. There. You should be finishing up whatever numbers I did case. 75 through 78, and then we're going to start exponents, which is the next chapter. Yes, please. <laughs> Figured that. Hoping you're Are you ever going to buy the other one for you and your boyfriend? Black one? Have money. Oh. You always say that. You said it's going to be. You never, I mean, you get paid all the time, but then you never have money. I said, I don't give a crap. I told him you could sell it. Well, no, that, and if, if, is that where we're at that you don't want it? Okay. No, I know you did, but I just, I didn't know if. You told me that last year and I wound up saving it for you. Well, no, you said I told you last year that I didn't. Okay, that's I just want to make sure before I give it away or sell it. Now, I remember you saying that, but again, sometimes kids aren't always clear about it. So I just want to make sure. I wanted witnesses. I just wanted witnesses. Um, I may not. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll go into the book. I guess I'll go into the book. Still, I may not use the book for this, but we'll see how far we can. 
I'm not definitely not going to use the book for the first part. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Shoot, actually, wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, this part will work. I was going to say, some of you can't even get into the online devices. Oh, you're doing um, You did? Oh, we're not doing the online, but we're doing the SAT practice. And that's, that should be set up, I hope. We'll find out, I guess. On... No, I, I need to email about that because nobody can get into Maybe it. Maybe you can scan the book. Well, that's to give help with a problem, yeah. So, like, if you're doing a problem and you don't know how to do it, you can scan that um, and get help on it. But that would be more for like if you had the book at home and stuff to work with. Um, let's see. All right, so um, did you check your answers? Any questions? I'm not going over anything on that. I'm hoping you can break down numbers into their time factors. So let's go to, oh, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Um, whoa, what is that? I don't even remember that in the book. Huh. What is, oh, now we, all right, hopefully you guys know all that. So again, you are responsible, even though we didn't go over everything, you're responsible for one through 82, anything in that fair game. Just because I didn't go over it, this is prerequisite stuff. Now, odds are pretty good. I'm going to mainly put what we did in class, but there's some stuff I skipped over that you could see on the quiz. So make sure you go through and check all the odd ones or the, even the sections we didn't go over. Uh, it's really taking a long time. All right, here we go. Exponents and radicals. So, uh, oh, hold it, hold it up. Uh, you're almost out of here, too. Uh, somebody else waiting. I right, hurry back because I'm going in the next lesson. So, I am. Well, I mean, I can. They don't play as much as I'd like to, but this is how many people we've had going just this class alone. Eight, four, five, six. I haven't even had six people go all day. Six in this one class. Uh, I mean, I think Miss Newman's actually going to take that. Away. I thought I'd come out and help her. Um, all right. I have to give you. What's that mean? Oh, well, that's how you say it. What mean? Or you say, yeah, three to four. That's the one. Everybody wish Deanna luck in her match today. And Tanner. He's not in the only team. You said you weren't doing bowling. I have to. She was a chance. She kept saying you're not doing it. But she, but she told me to come in. Let me see. No for I don't trust her. If your name's not on the list, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, just you, yeah, he said release these people. So if you know your name's not on here, you're not going. Yeah, you're not going. Good try. I don't even want to go. I know, that's what you told me a million times. That's what made me wonder why you're getting up. Oh, can't see that. Good thing I'm not recording. Or am I recording? I don't know. Uh, well, luckily I can. Although I missed the Xbox stuff, I'll do it again. Um, sometimes I actually just go through and do my own recording and skip all the middle part where we work, and then it's only like a twenty-minute recording. All right. So, what's that mean? Uh, how do you say it? What does it mean, Janelle? Yeah, it means we're gonna take. What is that number called? No. 
No, that's this part. So this is the exponent. No, variables are unknown numbers. We know what that number is. No number. It is a known number. Come on. Come on. Nope. I will refer to it sometimes just as a big number, but I want you to know the. It, it is an integer, but that's what we're talking about. Text on it, the whole number. Value. The whole number. What is the foundation called of a building? The base. D, aren't you so glad you stayed? What would we have done without you right there? Like, you would have told us. You would have told you the right. base. So, base is the big number. Exponent is the little number. I already wrote exponent. You can't read it. Just remember that. Base, big number. I'm going to refer to them and just move on so you don't know what I'm talking about. All right. So, this does mean you take the base and multiply it times itself, not times the base. Please don't anybody make that mistake and multiply the base times the exponent. You will never, ever do that in math. Never multiply a base times an exponent. Like, don't say this equals three times four. That's what somebody does. Every now, granted, it's in a different math class that they do that. That's what that means. Now, there are rules of exponents. There's a whole bunch of rules. There's the product rule. There's the quotient rule. There's the product of a power rule. There's like five, six different rules. I'm about to show you the only one you really, truly need. You understand? It can solve all the other. Um, it's called the product rule. Well, the product rule. So what it says is if I have, and this is in your book somewhere, if you want to look at the book, that's fine. I'm just doing it without the book for now. If I have the same base number, and I multiply that, Times another, well, that, I guess I said same, so that already implies you have two of them. I can add those exponents together and leave it in a, uh, here, let's do this. And leave it in, it's called exponential notation or exponential format. So that's the answer. If, I, if I'm multiplying again, got to be multiplying and have the same base. This is the key. Same base, multiplication. So if it's addition in between there, you can't do it. If it's two to the fourth times three to the third, you can't do it. You can't do it here. Just doing a phone check, see how many people. Just one of them. Um, we're going to break this down. I don't remember how I haven't done this lesson in a while. What again does three to the fourth mean? Right? And we said an exponent just tells us how many times we're multiplying a number, right? That's what we said in exponents. What's, and then that's, so again, all I did is take that and make it into that, right? What's three to the third mean? So how many times am I really multiplying that three together? That's where that comes from. The fact that Really, all we're doing is we're taking this 
and we've made this into a shortcut here and a shortcut there. And we're really just adding one over and over and over again in this bottom. Because we have one, three, two, threes, and we add all these up and we get three to the seven. That's why you can add these together. Because ultimately this is four threes, this is three threes, which means you have a three to the seven power. If you understand that rule, and then with some other little tweaks to it, every single other rule flows from that. So let's do. I'm, I'm going to go straight into a harder problem. Let's look at the book. So, oh, problems for exponents. We're going straight to the problem page. If we need to go back to an example, we will, but. Problem page looks like out there. What somebody have the page? What is my point? Yeah, 24. Oh, that's a super short hole. Yeah. All right, so Go ahead and do number five real quick. It's it's the product rule and say, oh, if we don't see an exponent on a number, what's the exponent? One. So when you don't see a one on that five, for example, in number five, we need to write a one there, and then you can do what we just did a second ago. Um, number five. I skipped over one through four. Uh, no, no, no. We're on the page 24, the pra actual practice problems. Now, I'm skipping all again prerequisites. I'm skipping all of it. We need to go backwards and show an example or something. We can, but for exponents, I don't think we'll need to. You get it? Done? Do you even know what we're doing? Oh, I said you do it. Oh. That one. Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't even care if you do that. I just wanted to explain it. I like that you did it. Uh, it would look pretty if I do it. Yeah, it's like I was getting it. It's from here. Is it real? All right, so it looks like people are getting done with it. Well, but I want you to give me what. So, what would that be an exponential form with a base and an exponent? So, your final answer should be in the format of a base and an exponent for all of these, not just that one. So I haven't taught you any other rules yet, right? I didn't tell you all those other rules I mentioned, quotient, all that stuff. Um, and I'm not going to right now. But I'm going to show you how this works for everything. What? I said cool with the light coffee. I just like the effect of coffee. Oh, I've never seen that before. What is that? Is that also like a harder candy or a soft candy? Hard. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I should do it before a workout. I do, I do caffeine before I leave here but I'm, on the day I'm leaving. Yeah. Not that a lot of people do that. Like a lot of those, a lot of those are just in general. Yeah. That never claimed to be normal. Uh, all right. So, what's the answer? No, I'll beat you. I will take you. You guys ask why do I have a golf club? To beat people that give me that answer. You do not multiply five times four. Oh, and we're never going to multiply. You could have said five times five times five in your calculator and multiply it out. You, you're never going to do that typically in an exponent problem. They want you to leave it like this. And I hope you weren't serious about that. I hope that was a joke. So that was your answer for that. Now, I haven't taught you any of the other rules, but we're still going to do the other problems. Only we're going to do them based on the rule we know. So look at the next one. Six. I know, right? Lots of stuff going on. Now, you could do what's inside the parentheses, right? Oh, no, you can't. Actually, I'm sorry. That's stuff. So let me write it up. Hold on. Try to do it. Number what? Six. And this won't be in the back, so 
we'll do it together. So that is a different rule. There's a rule to that. But again, I'm going to show you, you do not even have to have that other rule. Sometimes it is shorter to memorize the rules. I don't know what I made. No. My card is attached. What card? You have eight. I have two, I don't even know what the flavors are different. I just do it for Sam's caffeine. I just have caffeine in them, so I like caffeine. Or I need caffeine sometimes. It's very pretty. Eight? Yeah. What do you think? Five. Five. I'm going to tell you my coffee. <laughs> my first question is, what does that mean? Yes. Hmm? What's that mean? Are we looking for like the actual number in the or well here's the thing you I, you know I'll be honest I don't know how I'm not gonna I'm gonna leave it in exponential form I don't know what they do in the back of the book and we won't know on this one because it's it's an even number yeah we will look but again that's a different problem so this means two to the third times three squared and then if we're squaring it it means that we're multiplying it times itself. That's what it means. That's what I was going for. So there is an actual rule we could have used directly on it, but we don't need it because we know that a, an exponent means to take the base. So this whole thing in this problem, this whole thing is the base. That's the base for this problem. So we're taking the base and multiplying it times itself two times. Well, now what rule can we apply? Ready, what rule can we apply? Well, you're so chatty, Lance. So it's amazing when people are really chatty how long they get. So maybe if we pay more attention to this, we won't be quite so long. So what rule can we apply now? Yeah, the one I just showed, the only one we know, frankly, the broad rule. I haven't showed you any other rule. Wait. We are multiplying terms, some of them, so not all of them. Some of them have the same base. So if we're multiplying terms with the same base, we can add the exponents. So I can simplify that down. I would basically say two, and then we would say to the three plus three times three to the two plus two. Again, I'm just adding the exponents for the like basis, for the bases that are the same. And I don't know if they get it all the way. I don't think, I mean, there'd be no point in taking it all the way to the final one number, because then you could have just done it straight in the calculator without doing any exponent rules at all. So I. Pretty sure this is the format that they want. There's no teacher addition to this, so I'll never know. For this problem, there's not. So if I couldn't do math, so sometimes when I can't do the math, we're screwed. So that'd be your final answer for that. Like I said, if we were then going to take two to the sixth power in your calculator, well, we could have just done all that up there then. So pretty sure they want you to leave it that way. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll never be 100% sure. You teach? Oh, I do. So Sophie's going to do it correctly. All right, number seven. Try to do number seven. Actually, that one's easier. They should have made the number seven the hard one. Number six, what number seven is. So do number seven again. Kind of similar to what we just did. It's actually easier than what we just did. 